You are a blogger? Yeah. <laughs> blogger? 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 I'm a blogger. Blogger? No. I have a YouTube channel and I make videos. Can, can I, I your your YouTube channel? Yeah, of I, course. I search, I search it. What is the name of your YouTube channel? YouTube okay. channel. Gary Surfer. Yeah. Yeah. This is this me. Is yours? Yeah. This is me. Yeah. Oh my God. cold and cloudy here in winter, making it a good time for an adventure journey. So I packed my stuff and headed to the bus station to meet my old friend. Our trip was challenging. First, we had to travel to Warsaw Airport, which took six hours by bus. In Warsaw, we met our trip planner and friend Karolis, and from there, we took a plane to Budapest. From there, we flew to Dubai and then embarked on a long 10-hour flight to the capital of the Philippines, Manila. Manila, Manila. Manila, the capital of the Philippines, is extremely crowded and notorious for its heavy traffic. Fortunately, our hotel was located in the Malate district, right in the heart of the city, so we didn't have to travel far. Later, the last two guys arrived on separate planes, so we all gathered and went to hang out downtown. It was a legit pre-party. We checked out some restaurants, played pool, and had shots at the best local bars. It was decided that tomorrow we would leave Manila to begin a journey through the islands of the Philippines. Go faster. We booked scooters for this trip a month in advance. There's quite a big demand for them here. Just a few motorbike adjustments and we're off to the road. Ooh. 
riding at night, you have to watch out for dogs, crazy drivers, and sometimes even wild pigs. Very nice, great success. We usually booked apartments a few hours before arrival because you never know how many kilometers you will be able to drive that day. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Everybody. Take me out tonight. Where there's music and there's people and the young and the light. The hospitality in Magdalena was great and we really needed it because that day there were quite a lot of kilometers ahead. As we rode towards the south, we stopped many times randomly or checked out some of the most visited places nearby on Google. One of those rare finds was Bantakai Waterfalls, a tranquil spot nestled in the jungle with just a few tourists. Take me anywhere, don't care, don't care, don't care. And in the dark and underpass, I thought, oh God, my chance. Although this part of the Philippines is not popular among tourists, we found some really good restaurants and sightseeing spots. Another must-visit spot along the way is Camp Sur Water Sports Complex. People come here from all over the world for wakeboarding. But even if you're not into water sports, you will find amenities like massages, bars, pool tables and more. Give animals must stop. Further south, we visited Mayan Volcano Natural Park. Despite the cloudy evening, we relaxed and enjoyed our time there. As night falls, we start looking for accommodation. 
Even though it may not seem far away, it takes time to get there because we ride much slower at night. In the Philippines, there are a lot of fish restaurants and that night we stumbled upon the best one so far. Despite the need to wake up early and stick to our tight schedule, we always end up staying late, having a few drinks and enjoying the warm evenings by the sea with guitar music. <laughs> While staying in Donsol, we found out about a place where you can take a boat to see whale sharks. So we seized this opportunity and went for it. The Philippines is home to over 1,150 whale sharks, making it the second largest known whale shark population in the world. The whale shark has always been a significant part of the Filipino consciousness. Mission accomplished, but as rain started to fall, we had to hit the road again to stay on schedule. Mega Galini. As we continued our journey south, we reached our first ferry. The documentation process was long and confusing. The ferry fare wasn't expensive, around 1,000 pesos, roughly equivalent to 15 euros. Afterward, we took some selfies with soldiers and embarked on a two-hour boat trip to Samar Island. In the morning, while the guys were preparing their stuff before hitting the road, I had to find a printing company to renew my motorbike documents because they were almost destroyed. Okay, thank you so much. It's 400, yeah? Thank you so much. Thank you. It's like noon right now. <laughs> Bye.
When on the road, we always try to stop at better restaurants and we're often amazed by how the locals treat us. They always want to take photos with us joyfully. Made me see where I've been. Andrew Kay, Andrew Lee, Papa, Kumani. Let's do this. Nella, I just want you to let's just stop and catch up, please. Here. How many hours you travel here from Manila? That's an amazing bridge. Shining bright in the night. As we cross Samar Island, we reach Takloban where we spent the night. But before sleeping, we always wanted to get into a little adventure and went to a karaoke bar. Five days of bumpy roads, we had some minor issues with the bikes and needed maintenance. In the Philippines, motorcycle service costs are very low compared to Europe, and you can find service shops everywhere on the road. We continued west towards our next big destination, Cebu Island. It was clear that we wouldn't be able to reach our next ferry the same day, so we went to the port city of Palompon to spend the night. Early in the morning, we headed to the ferry station, where we once again waited in line to fill out documents. However, it doesn't guarantee that the ferry will depart on time. It's often delayed by a couple of hours due to weather conditions and other unknown reasons. While on the 
ferry, we usually find a cozy spot and take a nap. This time, with the sea calm and smooth as glass, the sun shining in full strength and positive vibes all around, we reach Cebu Island. Continuing further south, we had to visit Essoy Hot Spring Waters Resort, one of only two natural thermal pools in Cebu. Nestled in the mountains near Katmon, it's a breathtakingly beautiful place where you can relax all day and clear your mind completely. While three of us enjoyed full relaxation, the other two guys struggled through the muddy road towards Cebu City. Nice transport! <laughs> Yeah, nice. Thank you. <laughs> what is his name? Albert. <laughs> nice name. Thanks, man. <laughs> and the buffaloes used to say proud of your name the buffaloes used to say before reaching Cebu City we stopped at Turtle Point where there were lots of turtles in the water however we chose to watch local kids having fun in an old house instead the buffaloes used to after a long day riding through bumpy roads and jungles, we finally arrived in the city of Cebu. We booked accommodation through Airbnb near the city center. Finally, we had two days to chill and explore the city. Buffalo Land will be your home. <laughs> The nightlife in some parts of Cebu reminded us of Europe, and at times we truly felt like we weren't far away from home. Unfortunately, not all of us were ready to hang out all night after that long journey. Additionally, we needed to save some energy for tomorrow's explorations. Um, what? In the daytime, the city appeared in different colors and we began to notice the bigger contrast as we walked in various places. The Philippines is a Christian country and you can clearly see that from the dedication to their religion. Oh, no, no. 
Eating, drinking, and meeting random people is what it's all about in Cebu. And yes, we liked it a lot. As all good things come to an end, we had to move on because there was still a lot of road ahead. Moving out early in the morning is better because we can avoid the traffic, which is kind of a big problem here. As we move towards Molbo, we always had an awesome view, because on the left side, there was always the ocean. From encountering minor issues with the bike to visiting the best local waterfalls, playing pool with locals and witnessing cockfights, these were the experiences we had on the west side of Cebu Island. Enjoying the perfect weather and cozy evenings felt like paradise, but we didn't know that things could change upside down very fast. The time had come to leave Cebu and move to Negros Island. So we went to the port of Tangil for departure. The weather was very windy and we were told that the ship couldn't depart due to big waves. So we kept waiting. Despite the weather not improving, the ship departed anyway. Negros is the fourth largest and third most populated island in the Philippines and it's incredibly beautiful. Despite the bad weather, our journey through the islands, mountains and rainforest showed us its true tropical environment. Through mountains and jungles we traveled, and despite the heavy rain and wind, this day remained just as exciting.
After we crossed the whole Negros Island in one day, now we needed to get to Pane Island and do the same. It's good that sometimes you don't have to wait long for the ferry. That day, we crossed the entire island and reached Malay port, where we left our motorbikes. From there, we boarded a small boat that took us to the Boracay Island. Wow. Aquapelis koks, aquapelis. O, kaip čia bus gerai. Ir labai toli nuo jūros. We woke up in the little paradise of Boracay, a small island where people from all over the world come to relax. It's also a haven for water sports lovers. On one side of the island there are bars, clubs and cafes, while on the other side it's an oasis for kite surfing and windsurfing. If you're up for partying all day long, there are disco boats that sail every day, fulfilling all your needs. It was really sad to leave Boracay, but our journey was beginning to come to an end and we had to return to Manila. As we waited for our sixth ferry of the journey, we knew the trip from Malay to Batangas would take about 10 hours, almost the same as flying from Europe to the Philippines. The ferry itself was pretty nice. There were food, drinks, beds and even karaoke.
The sea was calm and still, and although our rooms were quite cold, we were tired enough to get some sleep. And here we are at Batangas, one of the most popular tourist destinations near Metro Manila. I'm a road that drives away, follows you back home. Before returning to Manila, we made a stop at the Lumampao view deck near Tao Lake. It was the perfect place to check in and complete our journey. After enduring 100 kilometers through heavy traffic with non-stop driving, we finally made it back to Manila. I, I'm a little divided. Do I stay or run away? Leave it all behind. Uh, it's times like these you learn. Again, it's times like these you give and give again. It's times like these you learn to love again. It's times like these, time, time again. Our adventure lasted two weeks as we journeyed over 2,000 kilometers on our motorbikes. Along the way, we explored lush jungles, mountains, waterfalls, lively towns, and crowded cities. If you were to ask me if I would do it again, sure, why not? Uh -huh. It's time to It's times like these, give and give again. It's times like these, you learn to love again. It's times like these, time, time again.